Hi there and welcome to this short clip having a quick look at some of the questions on the starter sheet I set on uh, 23rd of March um, for my classes at college. I've put in um, a definition of Le Chatelier's principle um, from the textbook so I'll make reference to this throughout. Uh, this is not a walk through every single question here, it's just uh, taking one or two from each um, of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, just to get you moving in the right sort of direction. Um, and then you can use the, uh, the answer scheme to, uh, to help you with the others. So obviously I'm not going to do the answer to question one, because you can look that up from the book. So if we take the second one. So thinking of question 2a, there's two moles of gas on the left-hand side, and there's three moles of gas on the right-hand side. So, increasing the pressure will favour the side with fewer moles of gas, so the position of equilibrium will shift to the left-hand side. So just considering what a moment, for a moment what I've actually done in the, the answer, I start by stating which side has fewer moles. Um, and then I say, what's going to happen to the shift in the position of equilibrium according to Le Chatelier's principle? I don't have to state the words Le Chatelier's principle would say blah, blah, blah. I just explain what's going to happen using the idea of Le Chatelier's principle to help me deduce and then say what position or what shift the position of equilibrium is going to move in. So what I'll do is I'll take one from each of the questions. Um, I won't do the what have I done part again because obviously you can rewind and have another look at this. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at about uh, four or five of these and hopefully that, that will help you. So in this one it's all about temperature this time. So I know that from my delta H value that it's positive, which means the forward direction is endothermic. So this time decreasing the temperature will favour the exothermic direction. In other words, the direction that will mean energy is released rather than taken in. This is Le Chatelier's principle in action again. So this time the reverse reaction will be favoured because that would be the exothermic direction. The delta H would be minus 51 going backwards. So for question 4b, um, if I add OH minus, that would react with the H plus on the left hand side, removing it to make water. So if you remove a species, the direction that makes more of it will be favoured. So we want the direction that makes more H plus. So if the reverse direction is favoured, it makes more of the yellow chromate 6 ion. Okay, let's move on to number five. So if uh, we add hydroxide, its concentration will increase on the right-hand side. So which direction is it going to go? to try to oppose this according to Le Chatelier's principle. So why don't you pause the clip and see if you can work it out before I tell you. So the position of equilibrium will therefore shift to the left in order to use up the excess hydroxide. So the side favouring solid nickel hydroxide is favoured making it less soluble in NaOH. So looking at question six, it gives you the uh, dissociation of a weak acid. And it says, to explain whether the percentage of dissociation will be higher or lower when the HA is dissolved in sulfuric acid. So the first thing to say is that dissolving the HA in H2SO4 will increase the hydrogen ion concentration. So the position of equilibrium will shift to oppose this and therefore shift to the left to use up the H+. So therefore, because percentage dissociation depends on the hydrogen ion concentration, if hydrogen ion concentration decreases, then so does the dissociation. So looking at question number 7, I'm going to do 7a. Now they only ask you to do the KC expression. So the expression for the equilibrium constant, that's what Kc is. So I'm going to do the Kc expression and also show you how to work out the units so you can apply that to the other ones as well. So I start by putting all of the products 
into what we call concentration terms. A concentration term is the square bracket that you see. So I also make sure that we have the, uh, the state symbol in there. And the little 2 next to Bx gas comes from the fact there are two moles. So seeing as the others don't have any numbers in front of them, I just leave them the way they are. So what I now have to do is work out the units. So each square bracket is moles per decimeter to the minus 3. So if I take Bx squared, that's actually two concentration terms because it's Bx times Bx. So that means it gets two mole um, decimeter cubed um, expressions. So I've just highlighted them there so you can see why there's three on the top and two on the bottom in my units calculation. So if I cancel top and bottom, I now know that I've just got moles per decimeter to the minus three. So that gives me my final units. So hopefully this has uh, been of some use to you. You can then take some of the ideas away and try and fill out the other answers to the rest of the questions. Okay, so thanks for listening, and uh, until next time, see you soon.